This is all there is to the bottom half of a Savvy's Workshop lightsaber blade in terms of electronics. Uh, we begin with the uh, battery pack contacts here for the battery voltage and the speaker, which is uh, in the battery pack. That goes up to a main PCB here. The microcontroller, which runs the whole lightsaber, is under this blob of epoxy. They take the, they manufacture the chip, they probably program it, and then glue it to the PCB, add little tiny gold wires from the uh, the chip, the little piece of uh, silicon that the, uh, the chip is made out of, little pieces of wire that go off of that to the PCB itself, and then to protect the wires and the chip, they dump it in a, uh, or they cover it in a big blob of epoxy. Uh, so all of the logic, all the sound files, everything that makes the lightsaber behave the way it does is underneath that little blob of epoxy. On the other side of the main PCB here, there's a couple of ribbon cable connectors. This ribbon cable uh, runs up the side of the uh, lightsaber hilt and it goes to the uh, the switch and the, uh, the contacts for the uh, blade itself, so the data for the blade. Uh, detecting when the, uh, the kyber crystal has been put into the crystal chamber, the, the switch, and as well as controlling the LEDs on the top half of the uh, lightsaber hilt. That all goes through that room cable. This one goes up to this extra PCB here, which has on it a little LED. This illuminates the bottom half of the kyber crystal chamber. And it also has the Hall effect sensor, which is used as the switch. And then this little piece here, this is the bottom of the kyber crystal chamber, and it also contains the RFID antenna. That is what is used to read the uh, RFID tag in your kyber crystal chip. Uh, there's one more thing here worth pointing out. There's a chip here underneath this um, electrolytic capacitor that I can move out of the way, and you can see it is an EM4095. This chip handles all the RFID work, and then the microcontroller uh, communicates through uh, with this chip to figure out, okay, uh, scan for a, an RFID tag. Did you find one? If so, what's the number coming off of it? And this thing will, if it's commanded to, scan for an RFID tag. If it finds one, it'll spit the number back out to the microcontroller. The microcontroller reads that number and then proceeds with whatever it's supposed to do based off of you know, what crystals inserted, is there a blade inserted, uh, is there a battery pack, all that stuff. So I have taken a look at this PCB and the Hall effect sensor that's being used to uh, perform or detect when the uh, lightsaber is being switched on and off. And my question is can I replace the Hall effect sensor with a mechanical switch? I've put the PCB in a vise. I've also removed the RFID antenna just so the uh, copper wires, which are really thin and delicate, uh, don't break while I'm working on it. You can see the connection for that are these two holes right here. That's where the RFID antenna would normally go. The connection to the switch uh, PCB is the one up here at the top right there and if we get a closer look at that you will see if it wants to focus you see that little white dot there how do i get in here and show you that there we go that white dot right there that pin there is pointing to what I believe is supposed to be the power pin on the switch uh, PCB, which means if I have the switch PCB connector mapped out, I now have an orientation for this. The connection should match up. So with that said, the second pin from the left, which should be that pin right there between the the tips there of the uh, the tweezers that pin should be the switch so uh, I need to first uh, pinpoint that uh, trace that that pin 8 or the pin 1 the one with the dot on it I need to trace that out real quick just to confirm that yeah that's going to the power supply and then uh, then I need to trace out where the switch pin goes 
and see if I can find a test pad. The goal here is to find a test pad that I can solder a wire to for the uh, switch signal that comes from the, uh, the switch PCB. And if I can find that, and I can put a wire to it, then I can put all this back together and start figuring out um, how I'm going to wire it up. So I have no sense of how well you're going to be able to see this, but I'm going to come in with uh, my probe here and get it on pin 2. And we have a bunch of test pads here. My probe is on multiple pins there. There we go. I'm only attached to pin 2 there on my probe. And you can see that test pad right there. That is the switch test pad. So that test pad right there. That is it. That is what we want to solder to. And it's conveniently, conveniently located between two other very close test pads, two very small test pads. So wiring something to that is going to be a pain in the backside. However, at least there's a test pad that we can now wire to. So, next step is putting a wire to it, I think. <laughs> talk about what I have done here. I've added two wires. The signal that comes back from the switch PCB uh, goes high when it needs to uh, signify that the, uh, the switch has been turned on. What I've done here is I've connected uh, the green wire, which is the that, that signal pin coming back from the switch PCB, to that blue wire there, which is hooked up to the uh, the voltage that goes out to the switch PCB. And at the other end of these wires is a switch. And so the idea is when I want to turn the lightsaber on, I just do that. And when I want to turn it off, I will do that. Now that is it. Just a couple of wires in theory. Uh, the next step is to figure out how to test this. So my first idea on how to test this is going to be to hold the contacts to the battery pack uh, with one hand and then flip this switch with the other hand. And in theory, uh, I should hear a crackle noise come out from here, the same as what the lightsaber would do if you tried to turn it on without uh, a blade plugged in or a kyber crystal inserted into the, uh, the crystal chamber. So I genuinely have no idea if this is going to work. So... I should actually first just make sure that this is in the off position. It is now. I'll just uh, orient this like so. All right, here we go. Well, I hear a crackle. I think it's working. Yes. You can absolutely use a mechanical switch. Cool. 
course, it can't just end there, can it? I have to actually hook this back up into the lightsaber and power it on with that switch somehow. Hmm. Uh, I tried to get the bottom shell piece on with the switch, but there's just, there's no room. Uh, I would have to drill a hole or something, and I would like to turn this uh, lightsaber back to stock when I'm done with this demonstration, so I'm just not going to connect it, and I need to be very careful that because this just wants to pull apart. Um, so I'm going to grab a, I'll put in a white kyber crystal. I haven't put the battery pack in yet. I kind of want to load this up ahead of time. Oh, see, I'm going to need to push. I'm going to need to push on that to keep the kyber crystal in place. Okay, now a blade. Okay, here we go. Works like a charm. So yes, a mechanical switch can be used to control the electronics of a Savvy's Workshop lightsaber. And now you know. And now I need to remove it all.